Hang on to your wands because Harry Potter is back! Well, sort of. Our favorite boy wizard isn't gracing the big screen again, but his wizarding world has expanded, shedding some light on one of the series' previously little-known characters, Newt Scamander. Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them introduces a fuller version of the guy previously best known in the Potter universe for writing a wizarding textbook. And while the new series starter introduces a distinct time, setting characters, and even vocabulary elements, there were some subtle nods to the Harry Potter faith or you might have missed. And of course, let's not forget the magic words. Spoilers ahead. Making a name the biggest tie-in between Scamander and the Potter universe, well, apart from being a wizard, of course, is the fact that he once wrote the book on magi-zoology that would later be taught at Hogwarts. Fantastic Beasts takes place long before Newt's anthology would become a part of Hogwarts' curriculum, so it was something of a nod to the Potter realm that Newt's new girl Tina gives its manuscript the name we all know. The Tiny Giant Suitcase the fact that Newt's suitcase had a limitless interior size was certainly a callback to things we'd seen in the Harry Potter series before. Consider how massive the Weasley's Quidditch World Cup tent was on the inside. The visual element of the attaché being opened by prying claws too seemed like a distinct wink to that sassy the monster book of monsters that tormented Harry in Prisoner of Azkaban. Hufflepuff Pride even though he's no longer in good standing within the halls of Hogwarts, Newt Scamander obviously doesn't hold anything against his old house, as evidenced by the Hufflepuff-colored scarf tucked away in his briefcase. The best wizarding school in the world is Hogwarts. Hogwash. It's a good thing he's not bitter towards his old institution, because we know his future grandson, Rolf, is due to marry Hogwarts resident weirdo Luna Lovegood down the line. Quidditch Quip Quidditch was a beloved aspect of the wizarding world throughout the Harry Potter series, and Newt makes a small reference to the sport when he's asked whether he's a seeker. His response? He's more of a chaser, really. That, of course, is a reference to his choice of field position. But perhaps if he had spent more time seeking the Golden Snitch, it would have better prepared him for the beast's grappling duties in this installment. Merlin's Beard even though American muggles are called no-magis, and there's plenty of other new terminology to take in during Fantastic Beasts, there's one turn of phrase that's a direct quote of a line from the Harry Potter films. Merlin's beard! Where have you heard that before? Merlin's beard! There are also some familiar spells and wizarding entryways, and this floating apple that eats itself in front of the boy is as direct a wing to Potter as they come. Behold the Niffler. The Niffler might be new to the big screen with Fantastic Beasts, but the adorable Molduck porcupine mixed creature has long existed in the written realm of magic. Although the Fantastic Beast never made the cinematic cut for Goblet of Fire, he gets more than adequate screen time in Fantastic Beasts. There are other creatures who had been mentioned before, but only made their screen debut in Fantastic Beasts, including the size-shifting Archimy and the disappearing Demi guys. But the Niffler is the real adorable hero of this movie. Dumbledore Before we didn't get to see our favorite headmaster in Fantastic Beasts, but he did get a major mention that proves he's alive and well as this movie unfolds. He was thrown out of Hogwarts for endangering human life. That was an accident. With a beast. Yet one of your teachers argued strongly against your expulsion. Now, what makes Albus Dumbledore so fond of you? We can probably expect to actually see him show up in the next installments of this series, because there's another important character coming into play as well that he'll have a lot to do with. Gellert Grindelwald 2.0 Polyjuice potion impersonations ran rampant throughout the Harry Potter series, so perhaps the big twist in Fantastic Beasts, that is, that Gellert Grindelwald had disguised himself as Percival Graves throughout most of the events of the movie. Shouldn't have been a surprise, but the reintroduction of Grindelwald does set the stage for some interesting character history to come, especially when it comes to Professor Dumbledore. In the final Harry Potter movies, we learn that the pair once worked together to recover the Deathly Hallows in hopes of making the world a better place, but their friendship soured after Grindelwald began dabbling in the dark Arts. Their duel to come will be one for the ages. Lestrange Family History The Lestrange family became a major part of the mayhem that arose at Lord Voldemort's end, but Fantastic Beast proves there was more to their backstory than we might have guessed. Before Bellatrix and Narcissa carried the family into the Dark Lord's corner, there was Lita. Lita Lestrange doesn't get much discussion in the first Fantastic Beast movie, but we do find out she was a former friend slash flame of Newt's, who apparently betrayed him. Count on her to come back and have some part in Gellert Grindelwald's attempt to establish a new world order for sure. 
the Deathly Hallows. If there's one thing that could not be hidden during Fantastic Beasts, it's the symbolism of the Deathly Hallows. In the movie, Grindelwald posing as Graves gives our new pal Credence a Deathly Hallows necklace, much like the ones we've seen before in the Harry Potter movies. This is also a clear reminder that the Deathly Hallows are going to be a big part of the battle to come. I want to be a wizard. Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.